Hello, party people, and welcome to a very frigid office hours. This worked out pretty well. I'm in, uh, uh, up in Michigan to visit my dad's side of the family, and it was Eve's first time seeing Michigan. So we got a big blanket of snow right before uh, Eve and I arrived. So that worked out absolutely perfectly. She gets the full uh, Michigan experience. So let's see uh, what y'all have upvoted. The top voted question comes from York. York says, hi Brent, recently you indicated in your weekly links that you're not a real big fan of schemas in a database. Can you elaborate as to why? So the thing with schemas is that when I see people using them, they're trying to break out objects by security group. That's the theory. And then they think that they're going to only assign permissions to specific schemas so people can only see the objects that they need. But very quickly in real life, you end up with this mismatch of, well, they need to see some of the tables in that schema, but not all of them. Well, they need to see some of the columns in some of the tables in that schema. So pretty quickly you end up doing custom security stuff that has nothing to do with the schema anyway, and the schema is just a waste of time. You might have other legit reasons to use a schema, but that one, if you're doing it for security purposes, you'll find out over time those walls just break down really quickly. Next up we have, let's see here, Brian. Oh, Brian says, linked servers, you bash them. Oops, hold on a second here. Let me make sure I got that right. The phone kind of went to sleep in my pocket there. Next up, Brian says, linked servers, you bash them, and it's still not actually showing it. Doggone it. Hold on a second here. Let me try this one more time. Come on, big money, no whammies. Click the button. It should show the question. Show the question. There it goes. Brian says, linked servers, you bash them, and yes, they're evil and slow. You've said, why not just correct connect directly to the server that has the data you want? And I agree. Great then we're done here, Brian. So why did you keep going? Brian kept going and says, but in cases where my friend has data on two servers and can't consolidate them, and you need to query it together, how do you optimize that? Oh, this phone is gonna get cold. I guess I have to hold on to it. So what I'll tell users is, is if you only need to do it once or twice as a random ad hoc thing, go right ahead, it's just not going to perform very well. If you find yourself doing it regularly and people want the queries to go faster, then long term, my performance tuning strategy for it is going to be to get that data onto the same server. Anytime that you need to join two tables together, you're going to find better performance if you put the data on the same server. For the simple, really, simple realization, simply, simple reason, that linked servers don't do any kind of caching whatsoever. Users are going to want cached data if performance is important to them. So to do that, we need to start moving towards putting those two, putting those two tables on the same server. Sometimes I hear people go, but it's too hard because they're high performance and they need separate servers. But then when we look at their servers, it's a couple of shoe boxes. They have less horsepower than my laptop. And I'm like, okay, so if we're going to start talking about performance, let's talk about some real hardware. Next up on the highest upvoted list, Yousef says, Hi Brent, I've been a DBA for five years. I landed a senior position. Management wants to use managed instances when we migrate to the cloud, and I want to use Always On. What do you think is the best? You know, for architecture, for personalized architecture guidance on something that big and expensive, you can't communicate that in a question on a free forum somewhere. That's really where things like my consulting come in. I know you probably find it hard to believe, but I actually get paid for doing this. I know, right? You thought I just worked for free and somehow I ended up with Versace winter jackets. What you can do is go to brenozar.com, click consulting up at the top of the site, and then I can help you craft a personalized long-term diagnosis and uh, action plan for your company to move to the right platform. Next up, M says, hi, Mr. Brent, can you tell me why it's bad for performance to write in my query where date column equals get date? It's not. 
Oh, but then as soon as I hear that, somebody's going to say, well, technically the query's not really get date, because how often are you really querying for one exact millisecond? People are saying, well, it's technically something a little different. Well, then if it was different, you should have asked a different question. But if the column is get, where a, a date time column equals get date, you're fine. There's not a problem with it. Next up we have, uh, Drew asks, is the plural site business model not long for this world? I don't know anything about the plural site uh, business model, so I couldn't tell you. I don't, I don't look at their finances or anything like that. Next up, Dance Monkey says, is it okay to simultaneously install Windows updates and SQL cumulative updates at the same time? Normally in businesses, they'll just only give you so many outage windows per week or per month or per year. They'll only let you take so many outages. And because I have a lot of updates that I need to apply, I end up doing all of them to catch up in the same outage window. Now he also says in his question, he says, uh, uh, is it okay to install them via Windows Update? Now see, that I'm not as fond of. That I would rather pre-download the uh, updates that I need and have them staged on a network share ready to go so that I can just double click on them and reduce my outage time. Otherwise, you're waiting for downloads if things didn't uh, download correctly ahead of time. I don't have the time for that. Next up we have, Frank asks, what is the next version of SQL Server that will be deprecated in the first responder kit? Well, Frank, the current versions that are deprecated are 2000, 2005, 2008, 2008 R2, and 2012, since if Microsoft doesn't support it, neither do we. So what would be the next version? Well, Frank, I'm not a smart man. But it would be the next version to SQL Server, Frank. What do you think? I'm going to deprecate 2022 before I deprecate 2014? Frank, work with me here. Doesn't make any damn sense. Now, Frank also asked, when will that take place? You could look at the support calendar. You could go look at SQLServerUpdates.com, and you can see when Microsoft stops supporting versions of SQL Server. So there you go, Frank. Next up, Peter asks, Hi Brent, querying spatial data is sometimes really slow. I can't find any hints on tuning these queries. Do you have any ideas on tuning queries on spatial data? No, spatial data is one of those features that Microsoft drops. It seems like in every version they're like, Hey, we have such and such new feature. Hey, we have such and such new feature. And then in all the subsequent cumulative updates and versions, it's just nothing but crickets. They don't improve that feature at all. In cases like that, it's a miracle if it even works in the first version, let alone if it goes fast. So when people are starting to, uh, to uh, store new kinds of data in SQL Server, whether it's graph or spatial or JSON or whatever, my advice to them is always wait till the next version. If the next version makes things go faster or makes it easier for diagnosis, here comes a pair of snowmobiles. Yeah, a pair of snowmobiles going like 60 miles an hour. Woohoo! It's kind of awesome. If it makes it go faster, then yes, you should probably look at using SQL Server for that. But otherwise, if it's like spatial where they never improve performance, that's why you're not finding a whole lot of advice out there about it. People aren't using it. Next up, uh, Patricia says, considering the limitations of both, what SQL Server feature do you recommend for tracking changes and knowing which user made the change? In the year 2023, she says, it seems silly to have to write a trigger. I recommend triggers. I recommend triggers because features like change tracking and change data capture usually don't tell you everything that you need in the granularity that you need it and nothing that you don't need. Often I find that they cap capture ch changes I don't give a rip about. Hey, quantity and stock just went down by one. Hey, quantity and stock just went down by one again. I don't care. I want to know about attribute changes to a product, not changes to quantity and stock. And for that, things like a trigger make a whole lot more sense. It's not like they're hard to write either. Pretty straightforward to write. 
Next up, the Vibrant DBA says, in a prior webcast, you mentioned ca calling on Andy Leonard for SSIS, and my experience with his videos has been amazing. That's great to hear. He says, now, who is the Brent Ozar for SSRS? There isn't one. SSRS hasn't been changed in like a decade. There's not a whole lot happening over there. If you're gonna go start learning a product, I'd probably recommend learning Power BI rather than trying to learn SSRS. Doesn't have a whole lot of legs left under that corpse. Next up, Lenny says, what is your opinion of distributed partitioned views in SQL Server? It was an interesting idea. It never really caught on because generally speaking, people want to break data out across multiple servers because they think it's going to go faster. But then you still have to have bottlenecks there on while you're going to pull all the data back through one particular SQL Server. So I never really saw that catch on. Uh, next up, Consulting Madness says, when I'm discussing, while I was discussing reporting requirements, a client explained an internal process that sounded like a back door to avoid a tax requirement. It sounded a little sketchy. Have you ever encountered something like this, and did you keep working with them, or do you have other advice to share? We'll make this the last question, because it's interesting, but also because my hands are freezing, and I'm going to go put them in my pockets. So I've had a couple of things like that over the years. I've had a couple of things where a client has been describing how something works and I'm like, hold on, before you tell me any more about this, I'm a little nervous. According to the contract that we signed, because sometimes financial companies will have me sign contracts where I have to immediately alert their compliance department or their security department if anything is sketchy. I'll say, hold on a second, I, there are things happening on this call where I think I might have to report it to your compliance officer or your security officer. Let's go ahead and loop them in now. And if the company's like, oh my God, no, wait, no, 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 we're not gonna tell them anything about this, then I can go, you know what? I, I'm not comfortable continuing without them on the call. And if you'd like to engage in the engagement right here, I understand. But otherwise, let's get your compliance and security people in here on the call. And I've actually had it go both ways. I've had in one case where a company went, oh, no, 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 we totally understand why you would say that. We'll go ahead and page, bring in someone from compliance. And the people from compliance were super professional. They're like, look, you can look on the website. Here's my name. I'm this chief compliance officer. Let's have a quick discussion. And they had a discussion. The compliance officer said, yep, I totally understand. I'm going to send you an email right now recapping this feature that we're talking about here that I'm aware of it, that there's nothing to be concerned of, and so forth. That gave me nice, warm, fuzzy feelings, at least that my rear end was covered, and I must have misunderstood whatever it was that they were talking about. And most of the time, I don't need to know it anyway from a database perspective. But I've also had it go the other way, where people were like, no, 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 we don't, you, you can't talk about anybody with this. And I've said, okay, no problem. I'm just gonna stop here. I'm gonna bill you for the time that we've worked up together to this point and we'll call it quits. You can find another data professional to solve this problem for you. Because after all, you only get one reputation. You don't want to be dragged in as a witness or as, as something that went on or to have screenshots in your work as a consultant saying, this is the stored procedure that I made go faster because they will throw you under the bus in a heartbeat if it looks like you had some kind of something to do with uh, this thing that was a terrible backdoor. All right, that's a good uh, place to stop there. It's a nice, you probably have been seeing, oh, seeing my uh, breath as we go through here. I think it's, my parents have a thermometer outside. It's 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty far below zero for Celsius. Uh, and it's got, you know, the sun's going down. That's actually the sunset somewhere over there. Uh, sun's going down, so it's time for me to go warm up inside, probably with some tequila, and uh, I think pasta is on the menu for dinner tonight. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.